Okay, reminder to self, when securing a place to live, be very sure to scope it all out and get plenty of pictures before giving any kind of deposit. No One Gets Out Alive is a new horror movie on Netflix and it's just in time for Halloween. And it's got some messed up imagery, but is that enough to create a compelling watch? Umbar is an immigrant in search of the American dream, but when she's forced to take a room in a boarding house, she finds herself in a nightmare she can't escape. Now, this is a very atmospheric horror story. If you've ever seen the Netflix film The Ritual, this is written by the same author, and there are certain similarities between the two, which I will get to in just a little bit. There's this large mansion-type building that could be a hotel or even an apartment complex as it has a ton of rooms spread throughout multiple floors. Now, if I were to walk up to this, I would just keep walking. Not only does it look like a massive health hazard, but it's just downright decrepit and creepy looking. And to top it off, the rooms available for boarding come with some very specific rules that should make any person's hair stand on end. It's women only, except for the caretaker who lives there with his brother. Eh, there's red flag number one. Then no guests can come in and nobody can leave after I think it was like 9 p.m. Red flags two, three, and four, five, and six. <laughs> I mean, everything about this place screams just do not enter. Now the film opens with some old movie footage of a sort of archeological dig where this mysterious box made of stone is uncovered. Then the movie brings us more towards the present where we see some people inside the house and lurking in the shadows are these figures with kind of glowing eyes. <laughs> nope, gotta go. I really like how this sets up the anxiety and dread right from the start. Within the first few minutes, we get a sense of what type of atmosphere that we are going to experience. So Ambar is our central character and she's an illegal immigrant. And the reason I make note of this is that the story uses this as an isolating feature. As things get more bizarre where Ambar lives, she becomes truly alone. I mean, there's no one she can turn to. And in the event of something that could cause her harm, she's still very hesitant to involve any sort of law enforcement because it could just mean that she gets into trouble. And not only does Ambar experience all kinds of issues within the house, she's also floundering at her job because her boss is just not her biggest fan. And she makes a friend at work, but that friend isn't really in a spot to help Ambar out. This isolation that Ambar feels is a key element to the story because some very jacked up things begin to happen at the place that she's living. But she really has no way of escape and then nobody to turn to. Umbar also becomes a sort of unreliable narrator for us. She will see things, but then we find her waking up someplace else. So was she really experiencing what we saw, or was that some kind of messed up nightmare? The line between dream and reality blurs incredibly, which then causes us to have some doubt about what's really going on. The creep factor is still looming large, but could it all be in her head? I like the actors. They're really convincing in their roles. The two main players are Christina Rodlow playing Ambar and Mark Menchaca playing the landlord named Red. Now, Red is the character you love to hate because he's just a bit off, even if we don't know exactly why at the outset. And he adds another level of dread to the entire house. Now, I mentioned that there are some similarities between this and the ritual. And one of the things that feels a little familiar is the mysterious nature of the box. There's some feeling of power or even a draw to that box. And I don't think it's adequately explained, but it's still a very unsettling force within the narrative. There's also another feature to the story that is revealed towards the very end. Some practical effects are employed, and I thought that they looked great. Again, carrying the very disturbing atmosphere forward to freak us out. I really like that this story isn't set in one type of horror genre. It starts out as one type and then morphs into another. Now, I'm not really going to tell you which types because I think that ruins a lot of the suspense and the unease. Now, for me, I loved the imagery and overall tone of the movie. It's wildly ominous with a pretty bleak outlook. And there are more than a handful of scenes that just gave me the willies simply by the use of shadows and angles. And even when I knew something was going to appear in the periphery, it still freaked me out. Now, the thing I found lackluster, though, was the mythology that surrounds the story. I think the story begins to set it up really well, but falls short when it comes to giving us some good detail. And it's those details that would help to make this an even more disturbing horror. Yeah, the atmosphere is there, but this didn't really have the sticking power for me. I had a blast while watching, but the more I thought about it afterwards, it sort of falls apart, and it doesn't create this uneasy spot in my memory that haunts my thoughts as I dwell on it for days. I wanted to be sucked into the lore just as I was sucked into the atmosphere. 
And that lore works to explain motivations for certain players and their actions. As the movie stands, the actions work in the moment to cause distress and fear, but once they're done, the fear is gone. There's even a really good and twisted ending to this, but it would be even more twisted and sinister had the legend been fully explored. Now don't get me wrong, I still had fun with this. It's an enjoyably creepy watching experience that I wholeheartedly was invested in as the things went bump in the night. The visuals were well crafted and they worked to envelop us in menacing surroundings. And even if this isn't terribly memorable, it's still good for a late night scare. There's no sex or nudity, but a lot of profanity and some very brutal violence. I give No One Gets Out Alive three and a half out of five couches. What's a good atmospheric horror that you enjoy? I'd love to hear what it is in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.